Mobile Tech RX, the app that helps you make more money. Don't forget to grab your Magnatech mat, available at most PDR tool distributors. Welcome to another episode of PDR Tool Time. I'm your host, Daniel Grom, along with Vince Delisandro and John Renstrom. Hudson is frozen. <laughs> Solid. He is, he's in the tundra. <laughs> And we got an exciting show. We're going to go over an update on scanners. We're going to go over some new tools from Anson and a whole lot of other stuff. All right, guys. How you guys doing? How's your week? Busy. Busy? Busy? You've been home. You've been home on, on snow days. Only today. No, I'm, it's South Dakota, man. We don't get snow Not days. you. Not you. <laughs> I didn't say busy. Yeah. I'm yeah. not busy. Okay. <laughs> Vince, was oh, busy. it was a snow day for Vince. <laughs> if I was down there with you guys, I would not have gone out at all whatsoever. Really? I can't not yeah. go out. I have to go out. I can't stay cooped up in the house. I can't do it. You have four-wheel drive? I have all-wheel drive on my Toyota Highlander with the snow button. Yeah. And the snow button works really good. <laughs> it? it does, so, yeah. But my only reason isn't because of the weather. It's because there's so many people who don't know anything about the weather. Like no, you grew no, up no. in Chicago, yeah. <laughs> you know, um, I'm, I'm watching some of these posts on Facebook and everybody's talking about this. And I'm like, man, I learned to r- drive in the snow on a bicycle. Cause I'd ride my bicycle in two foot of snow to go to, go to school. It was probably futile effort, but dang it. My goal was to stay upright the whole way, you know, right. yeah. Yeah. No. John, I, I feel your pain. My mom, I'm the I'm the youngest of four kids, right? And I went to private Catholic school from <laughs> kindergarten to freaking twelfth grade. And I could count on my hand one hand the amount of times that my mom drove me to school or picked me up. I had to walk Absolutely. every single day across the Kennedy Expressway in Chicago, a bridge which you would be blown over on, on a big, windy, <laughs> snowy day. So, you know, yeah. going out in this, uh, this episode that we're having down here in Texas, I, I, I just, I enjoy it. I enjoy the challenge. You know, I, it takes me back. Yeah. You just have to slow down and keep your distance and break check. And, and when you, when you're safe to do so and, and uh, don't take off oh. fast and don't slow down fast. Yeah. See, I lived in a really small town, like 500 people, 75 mm-hmm. miles from the next town. So uh, yeah. we could ride our bikes because nobody could steal them because you knew everybody. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> There's as many people in our whole town as was in your neighborhood. Yeah, that's, uh. that's funny. But no, it's uh, it's poor Hudson. He's got it a little bit worse than most uh, down there in Houston. There's they, no they got- power, no water. No. Or it's been a week. No, 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 no. It's been I think four days, on, right? It's been three days. Yep. Uh, you know, he's got power now on the third day, but that's a long time, even two days to go without power oh. and water. With little kids? With little kids, yeah. Bless yep. his heart, man. I'd be like, uh, okay, it's family vacation time. Get in the car. <laughs> We're going to well, Florida. Well, that's what I told him. I told him to drive up here because uh, we found out. Now, this is just a theory, but where my house is, I got a hospital uh, about half a mile to the right of me. And then next block over to the left of me, I have a natural gas line, uh, pumping station, little pumping thing. So we're thinking we're on that grid. Everyone, I mean, everyone in my neighborhood around me went out and we didn't, I felt guilty as hell. <laughs> you know, cause everyone's I, like, I kind of agree with you. Cause I'm, I'm next to a fire station and we don't uh-huh. go out usually. Right. Yeah. Unless, unless a car hits something or whatever. So I've been making the effort, I, you know, and coming from California and from Chicago, I, I was cold weather trained in Chicago, but I was disaster trained in California. Yeah, and right. A lot of people don't understand that, but yeah. it is put in our brain quite a bit when you're from, when you're in California and you live there, Hey, get a generator, get a, uh, you know, get a survival kit going this and that it's driven in your brain. Yeah. We have earthquakes, we have fires. We have, yeah, we have the four seasons flooding. of California, right? Yeah, uh, we, flooding, we, anything can happen. Fire, <laughs> uh, drought, and mudslides. Yeah, yeah. See, and, and that's my only. You know, I I don't have a complaint against the state of Texas. My complaint was there was no redundancy. 
Um, yes. We can complain about all the men of history all we want. But the reality is they built redundancy because they watched people die when it didn't exist. We have such a soft society now. Everybody was insistent that, well, uh, climate change, there's never going to be any bad weather of the extreme here. And Mother Nature comes along and always proves humans wrong. Yeah, the last time this happened was, uh, I forgot what 85? they said. But it was like, it, yeah, uh, I think there was another episode after 85. Uh, not as bad, but is it this? Does this solve global warming? Is it done? No. Are we done? Yeah, well, global warming done a long time. Oh, yeah, it's okay. climate change. Oh, climate change. Oh. Yes, okay. <laughs> I'm not up on my terminology. I'm sorry. Well, here's the deal though, because realistically, you know, I like. Uh, Governor Abbott here down in Texas. He's a pretty reasonable guy. And like you said, the redundancy is definitely, there's something wrong with that because they were advised to winterize last time they had an episode, which was like 13 years ago or something like that. And they said you is highly suggested or recommended. Now here's the question. Publicly owned or privately owned? So you want the government, you you know, here in Texas, hey, it's super red. We don't want any regulations. We don't want government running us and telling us what to do, right? Yeah. So here's a company that failed Texas, right? A privately yeah. owned yep. company. A privately owned. It's privatized electricity. So there has to be some type of balance, right? There has to be checks and measures in my opinion the government should have stepped in somewhere along the lines and had some type of regulations okay you could be private however you know you need to follow some guidelines here yeah you still you still gotta uh, make it so that people's i mean how many people are gonna die or, or did die from that extreme cold and no power in their houses we're probably never gonna totally get that number yeah. but Some i mean you're blamed on covid i'm sure oh yeah but uh, and the reality is, you know, uh, we see a lot of stuff talking about the wind power and it's all because of, of that. It, it, yes and no, but only on a backhanded way because wind power is such a small portion. Where it is, the only thing wind power did was got rid of all of the coal-fired power plants because a coal fire cannot ramp up and down with the speed needed to make up the difference of wind. And only natural gas can do that. And we don't have the natural gas infrastructure to take that. That's why everybody lost heat, lost electricity, as we had no ability to fire up those generators. It froze. It so, froze. So, yep. yeah. So Daniel's uh, pushing us along here. We're on video, <laughs> Daniel, so everyone can see that now. <laughs> so you're going to have to we're, give we're, us. We're going down a rabbit hole that. Nah. Could, could yeah. Go a ways. So, <sighs> yeah. Well, you Let's know what? get on to PDR talk. We're going to have to have like a hand signal or a code word like muskrat or <laughs> waffle house <laughs> or something like that. To well, on. They don't know my code. You just told them the code. Now oh, I was just yes. twiddling my fingers. I don't know what you, why you have to divulge our code. Right. You know, you blew it. In my opinion. I did. I mean, nobody, nobody knows what, what this was. <laughs> I'm I'm right. I'm a wind turbine. This is a wind turbine. <laughs> so, all right, Daniel's got a few tools, but before we get into that, this this rehash, I had the ultimate scanning experience today. Yeah, yeah, get oh, into yeah. that. Um, so let's let's talk about that. Now, I can't we can't put it on the screen and can't share it because the information in those scans is is private. But I am working on a 2021 Subaru Crosstrek. Uh, it is the insurance company is Farmers Insurance. How so, many miles? How many miles? Uh, oh shoot, I don't even remember. Five. That's, yeah, it's it's under ten thousand miles. Uh, a new, but, new, uh, new car. It's a new car. So Farmers Insurance, and we've all dealt with farmers. We know what they're like. You know, we no, are farmers. We'll, yeah. Da, 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 we, da. we know a thing because we've seen a thing and we refuse to acknowledge that thing, you know. So, <laughs> but, uh, so they didn't want to pay me for pre-scan. And I'm like, look, I don't I don't care. Now, we've all discussed this. I have all tell scanners, but I decided I'm winning this argument at all costs or I'm not going to fix this car. 
So I said, here's what's going to happen. Now, let me ask you something. Why, why were you so stubborn? Because I would have maybe relented. Because this car Cause, cause of belongs this <laughs> to a doctor okay, and a college professor who has a PhD in digging into everything. His idea of a fun hobby is to read the owner's manual. Oh, okay. So, so you got this is from the, be, the owner. Okay, good. This is going to be over good. the top. I like that. And um, now I'm playing with different scanners. We're, we're toying around. And what we've been discovering throughout the 2020 season was we're getting all these rigs in brand new with pre-existing codes. And that's been my argument when I put my pre-scan on my estimate is I label it to establish ownership of all pre-existing codes prior to the unplugging of any module, such as overhead console, uh, rear view mirror, tail lights, external mirrors, and et cetera. And I, that's how I word it on my estimates. Well, this guy says, no, nah, I'll pay you post-scan. And I said, no, you have to do pre-scan. And then we were arguing about the recalibration of the eyesight. And he said, no, nah, it doesn't need that. And I, so I sent him a link to Subaru's pay site. And I said, here, you have to buy your own subscription. You can't piggyback on mine, but it's 191 pages on how to handle that eyesight if you want to print it. Yeah. <laughs> and, uh, well, th that immediately got me a phone call. And he says, look, John, I'm not being... I'm not being fighting, you know, I've got to deal with farmers and we have this. And I said, well, here's the thing. That car is going to the dealer and it will get pre-scanned. When I complete the repairs is going back to the dealer and it will get post-scanned and it will get uh, recalibrated on that eyesight because I'm going to unplug that module. And I said, and you're going to pay me markup and you're going to pay towing to get it from my shop to the dealer. And he relented. So today I get the car, goes now, to the is, dealer. Let me ask you, is there a reason why you didn't use your own scanning technology? Or because when I was a proven point. A proven a point. Okay. That's the only reason I did not use my Altel scanners was I was proven a point that if you're going to argue with me about pre-scanning, it's going to cost you the most amount of money I can charge you. Okay. Right. Just between us. <laughs> did you scan it before you sent it to the dealer? No. Why not? Because it went from the owner's house to the dealer. Oh, okay. 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 Went straight to the dealer, which is where the surprise came in because the dealership tech went out and scanned this brand new Subaru that they sold and it had da, 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 11 codes. Wow. Right off the bat. Brand new car. Off the bat. Brand new car. Yeah. But you had a feeling. Right, that it was going to be yeah, like that. yeah, because we had another twenty twenty one Subaru that had two coats, brand new with a uh, twelve hundred miles on it. So uh, now their software absolutely sucks. I mean, uh, uh, Daniel and Vince and Hudson all received the tirade of f bombs that I had when I was being frustrated by my Altel scanner uh, one day. But no matter what, they are. <laughs> way more user friendly than this dealer software because I'm yeah. working with the tech on this dealer software and uh, they can't email it. They can't print it. We have to take photos with our phones of the screen in order what? to get proof. Yeah. Oh, geez. Well, and I didn't have time to show them all how to do print screen on a windows machine. And <laughs> you know, it was going to be, it was going to be a drawn out procedure. But the point is, so you had to teach the O or potentially teach the OE uh, certified technician that was scanning the vehicle how to print the screen or or to save it, huh? <laughs> yeah, well, they do it. They they do it their simple way. Is they've just been doing this for years and emailing them to body shops and and techs. And I'm like, no, wow, you really, there's a thousand better ways to do this, people. All right. <laughs> but my, and the pictures my, got mud all over the screen and just yeah, yeah. so but my point is there was 11 codes and even the service manager was like okay is there a particular reason why it is that you are doing a pre-scan on this car and i said well yeah i want to make sure that i know whether there's codes and they're 
they honestly thought there wasn't going to be anything. <laughs> Everybody yeah. did. It's a brand new car. Yeah, and then there's yeah. 11 codes. So now Subaru had to fix those. They're all under warranty. Subaru took care of all those codes. So by the time I get the car in my shop, I've got a car with no codes. Yeah. I've got a clean car. But what would have happened if I had to unplug, say, the eyesight, uh, the overhead console in that thing, and then I took it into the dealership, and it's got my three codes that I cause and 11 others that I didn't. And they're going to want have an awful lot of questions as to why all of those modules suddenly have a code. Man, I ain't paying for that. So no. when you called up the uh, the assurance ass- insurance adjuster did you na, 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 na. i sent him an email with all of the <laughs> the photos because they need copies of that to prove that the the scans happen so i sent him the na, 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 uh, dance though when well, you were sending I was, it <laughs> i was a little i was a little more polite than uh it might not show up on this come on I, you were a little giddy weren't you Oh, I was beyond giddy. <laughs> I was, I was, uh, I had my maniacal laugh going yeah. crazy because I was like, I told you, homie. I said, you know what? When I sent it to him, I said, what if they just said that these were caused by the repairs and then farmer's insurance would have been paying for this? Yeah. I said, you're trying to cut costs and I just saved farmers a ton of money, you know, in 15 yeah. seconds or less. Take that. (laughs) But but that is the whole reason for a pre-scan and the whole argument for the pre-scan. Did did you uh, ask the dealer what the estimate would have been for clearing those codes? Um, No, because they acknowledged that they were their problem. I know. They they just handled it. I mean, it would have been would have been nice to know what that would have cost. The only thing is, is how that's going to work out is they're going to have to check every module and nobody knows what that is going to cost until they dump all the hours into it. You know, I would guess that they would, they would estimate 20 hours at mechanical rate of what 70 to a hundred dollars an hour. I don't even know what. Oh, wow. Really? Yeah. So because they don't know what they're going to do. Yeah. So potentially how many dollars would that have cost you? Well, that could have been five, six thousand bucks pretty easy, or it might have been three hundred, you know, because they could have just gone in, you know, and cleared it and then re scanned it and went, okay, everything's functional or fine. But instead, what they did was they're like, oh, this car wasn't checked in properly. Yeah. <laughs> and so there's liability was, with that, right? There there's is. liability. So, and we're talking about this because this was an outrageous point that you were trying to prove to the insurance adjuster however it, it's completely valid i mean this is what we're working with as pdr technicians and if you're not scanning vehicles a the safety number one it's about the safety of the vehicle the safety of the customer if we're unplugging something and plugging something back in and needs to operate properly and it needs to be checked to make sure it is being operated properly and not yeah. just clearing it because you're clearing it You know, uh, and that's, I think that's the importance and that's why Anson brought, uh, the scanning technology to our industry. And it's the only PDR company that will ever carry Autel and sell Autel. We're the only distributor. Here's my question is like, as a tech, I'm like, okay, if I'm unplugging this or that, is that going to throw a code? How, how would I? Find that out. Scan it. You scan it. <laughs> okay. <laughs> that is the absolute only way to find out whether you threw a code. Otherwise, you find out in the lawsuit because worst case scenario happened. Now, the I'm, likelihood, you know, of anything ever occurring is one in a million. But I, I don't have that kind of luck at winning the lottery. I haven't. <laughs> so reverse. let me give you another example, because if there's a lot of uh, our listeners out there that do work for enterprise enterprise requires you to use Aztec. Okay. Aztec is a communication device, which is set up on your vehicle and then it's sent to the dealership correspond. I guess it's corresponding to the car it's working on. I don't know. That's the part uh, that seems bullshit. Yeah, I'm not 100% well. sure. I know it goes back to Aztec's headquarters. It goes back to Aztec's headquarters in Austin, uh, Texas, I believe it is. Yeah. 
And so say like, for example, I'm John Scotto and I have my shop in Boston, Massachusetts, out of a, a suburb there. And I'm doing enterprise cars. John, I'm using you, you as you as an example, because I watched you do it. Uh, <laughs> you plugged in the car and it, it goes to the technician. They read the codes. They, they, whatever they do, they give you the thumbs up and you're done and you're off and running and you're able to charge for that. Now, there's there's things that really don't make sense to me with that you know a number one enterprise uh aztec and what i found out geico is all owned by the same multi multi billionaire most richest man in the world warren buffett uh so they're in cahoots but it just doesn't seem right you know what i mean uh to, to scan yeah. the vehicle. Oh, okay. Here's an example. Sorry, John, not to divert from you, but no, I, had no, no, no. A, I had a technician. Uh, no, John Scotto. Not you, John. <laughs> You're still here. <laughs> uh, I had a, 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 a t customer come in. He's a customer of Anson's. He bought a 906 TS. He's up in Michigan, and his name's Rick, and that's all I'm going to say. He does work for Enterprise. So he ended up having to... Uh, hook up a two, two, 2021 super or I'm sorry suburban because they had to remove the hatch to do the hill repair right they yeah. put the hatch back on hooked it up to the Aztec Aztec could not reset the code so wow. here is supposedly a company that is doing OE or OEM scans and they weren't even able to reset the code huh. so and that's just one example. That's going to happen quite a few times with Aztec. I was present when John was doing one and it didn't work as well. Yeah. So, uh, you know, nothing is perfect. The, the, yeah. Whether it's a snap on one, Aztec, uh, Altel, Altel, launch. There's yeah. all little quirky things with all of them. Uh, the main thing is, is that you're doing the effort to check in the car to make sure that the car is clear of codes before you're working on it. And then afterwards resetting any code that you caused, yep. not what is on the vehicle, but the ones that you caused. you just don't hit the magic button and erase all of them. You know, yeah. you're only responsible for what you put on in there. Yep. And also when you're doing that final scan, um, you're proving you're testing those modules to make sure that they work. Cause if yeah. it doesn't work, it's going to throw the code right back up, even though you cleared it. Exactly. So, so, uh, it's a way to know that you have a problem that yeah. really all of this was, is just covering my butt. And, you know, we always talk about the most extreme case scenario and here it is, it was thrust in my lap. Yeah. And, <laughs> yeah. and secondly, to the scanning technology, you get paid for your time for doing it. If you're doing yeah. insurance jobs, they're going to pay you for your time to do it. They're going to pay you for the time to reset the module and everything else. So don't think you're just doing it for that $65, or uh, an hour uh, rate just to do a, a pre and a post. So anyways, this yep. is really boring talk to a lot of people. Daniel <laughs> is falling asleep as we're looking at him. His yeah. face is turning red. He's getting warm from the rum he's drinking. Let's, let's, get, <laughs> let's get to tools. Can we get let's to get PDR to tools. tools? Yeah. So let's Man. go on, Daniel. You, All right. Give us so a big old yawn. And, I got, uh, I got uh, some tools from Anson. And I got. Killing it already with that thing. A lightsaber. Yep. Uh, and I really like this. I think this is cool. I want a lightsaber attachment. Can you make that happen, Vince? <laughs> I saw Toledo made one. <sighs> Did he? Yeah. He, he, I'll send you the, <gasps> the picture. <laughs> I tell that. you what, man. I took that handle, and I got Anson's new tequila pick with the hub end on it. And the uh, this one not the pivot. Nope, not the pivot pick. The uh, the carbon steel with the sharp point. Okay. And um, I I didn't have it because I didn't go to work today. I had doctor's appointments today, so I I wasn't able to bring my tools. But I had that thing into a fender, and the tip on that one, it, because of the smaller diameter, was the only way I could get over and and push the dent out. But the rod was too short that, you know, I didn't have good leverage for pushing. Well, that inline handle, hold that up again, Daniel, the handle, oh, the handle, handle. 
So you'll notice the end of that handle, you can screw on all your other attachment ends right onto the end of the black part of the handle. Turn it, Daniel, turn it. To the, the other end. Of the, come on. The other there end. Uh, there you go. So I screwed the six inch long extension from the other handle on there and I had all the leverage I needed and I could not get one of my stain. I would have had to glue pull the dent otherwise. Huh. So I was like, hey, that was a dang handy tool. Came came in the mail at the exact right time that I needed. <laughs> Love it when that happens. <laughs> yeah. It There's was awesome. a, now you guys got the prototypes. There's a little bit of work we're gonna do with the handle portion of it, uh, just to ensure. Okay. Uh, you know, based on some of the feedback that we're getting. Uh, you know, I have unscrewed it. As fu- yeah. So we're gonna have to fix that a little bit. I would you guys prefer let me ask you this. This is the real question because you guys have it. Would you prefer to have that Loctited in from us or to choose the handle length that you want and Loctite it in yourself? Mm. When I mean Loctite, I would Loctite it with red. That way you can remove it. And, yeah. Because you know, it's one of those, I don't think. I, really I think you Loctite it because I can't see where you would put anything else on there. Exactly, right? Yeah, yeah, well, you can screw it to any length from there. That's what I just Yeah, proved. I would Once lock you tight it. it down tight. It was I would lock tight it from you guys. Yeah. Just be done with it. And I'm thinking that a you're not going to put handle. anything smaller on here. No, I think we're going to put a 5-inch handle. That's a 4-inch that you have on there, Daniel. Uh, yeah, that's like So we're going to go 5 and then if you know that way if you need to extend it, you could always extend it if you need to. Yeah. Yeah. So, I think that would be perfect. That would be because good. As technicians, we know we don't just pry with that. We twist and pry sometimes. Yeah. And it'll be really annoying if it does come undone, you know. Yeah. I so. agree. Yep. I agree. Yep. And then oh, you guys awesome. came out with these these uh, pivot picks. Um, so it's an inline pick. Yep. We've had those for ages, but we now have them on hubbed. So. Yeah. Right. So they're on hubbed. So and now yeah. you're starting to be able to get the most common or popular Anson tools on hubs, right? That's what is that what Anson's doing is slowly making hubs on all of them? Pretty much, yep. Yeah. The whole uh, tequila line of hand tools are already hubbed and ready to go. Same with seven now, thirty seconds. I'm, I'm, this is probably not where I'm not supposed to show this. So this is a prototype, I believe, right? It is, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Um, so we're showing you inside info. Yeah. Uh, so you guys are going to play around with Hmm. this a little bit, but, um, I think it's a great idea. Uh, something a little bit different than the cherry tips that we've been playing with. It's got a little flatter and then that roll on the side. Um, I was telling the guys before we started, I did a hard door dent that had a Z bottom to it. And I was able to push with the flat, and then I was able to finish with that hard roll. But yet, it was still a soft push. So unlike using a really sharp, sharp tool where you could get that crack, because it had a big, big scratch in it as well. Yeah, sure. Uh, that soft tip gave it a but little for, bit. But for hail guys, hail guys are going to really like that. You know, flat, I think they are. Tip. Yeah. Yeah. And it's removable and uh, replaceable, and they'll be sold probably in bags of a hundred, just like uh, you know the. Cherry Cherry caps. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, You're going to want them right in the same bin beside your cherry caps. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Now I'm going to show you uh, another prototype and um, Vince didn't want me to show this, but I'm going to show it anyway. So (laughs) it's, uh, what are these? The double, double shot, double shot, but with a blade tip. So this is hopefully going to come out soon. Who knows when, but um, it's a prototype right now. Now, where's your ideal uh, use of that, Daniel? So quarter panels through a uh, taillight and and getting along the uh, the wheel well edge. You got you got those sif- uh, soft pushes or soft uh, dents along the, the wheel edge, and this will knife right in there. It's, it's pretty thin. Not super thin, but super strong. Because yeah. um, you get in some quarter panels and you need that strength. You, you need the no flex, no mess, but that, soft pushes. And, that was actually made on accident. So it was not <laughs> made to design. 
uh, <laughs> what we had in, in, in mind. That's why I didn't really want you showing it. That's but, awesome. <laughs> well, uh, to, see, by showing it, I guarantee that it gets made. <laughs> so, right. Great, <laughs> well, we decided we're going to make it anyways because it's a blade tip. And not everyone, especially new guys, appreciate the sharpness of the tools. sharp. Yep. So we're finding out that, uh, you know, the you need both. Are, you always you need, need both. both. You need yeah, both. If you're working on aluminum, you need sharp. Yeah. But if you're working on soft, big dents like me, you need that. Yeah. So basically it is a double shot. It's a tequila double shot with a blade tip rather than a sharp tip. Yeah. yeah. And this is probably about what? 36 inches. I think so. that one. Yeah. This 36. We there's Yeah. We we only had four of those made, and you got one of them, so I'm surprised. Yeah, I was so. We happy. had two in each length, but they are yeah. they are going to be manufactured. Uh, in fact, this weekend, I'm myself and Craig Dyer are driving up to uh, A1 to uh, put in some other tool uh, designs, which is odd because I was actually supposed to. We were supposed to do that this past weekend, but the <laughs> weather was not cooperating at all to try and make it up to Missouri. Yeah. yeah, we would have been in misery in the state of misery. Yeah, that would not have been a fun drive. Yeah, so just uh, to be safe and and whatnot, we did not go. Oh, what you got there, Daniel? I got these from uh, Dent Reaper. Yes, and he, he said he would send them to me. Yeah. He's like, you're not fixing dents anymore, so I'm not going to send you any. I don't yeah, sure. <laughs> I know, right? But All right. you know, we were we were talking about the controversy about these and and Stan. I Leonard. love John Bydeen, by the way. Sorry, yeah, ma'am. Yeah. You you hold those up next to your head, and either those are actually a pretty slim tool, or your melon has just gotten bigger. It has gotten bigger. Both. Yep. <laughs> it definitely has gotten bigger. No, it's seen... actually it's not my head's getting bigger. My hair. Look at this. <laughs> Daniel's got. I haven't like had the a whole, haircut like... in forever. You look like Superman. You got like uh, the whole uh, Clark Kent thing Clark going. Kent. Yeah, I I decided to just let it grow. I'm I'm so tired of like trying to find somebody to cut my hair. I'm just like, okay, I'm going full on mullet. I, I think the mullet's coming <laughs> back. I'm going to bring it back if it's not coming back. Because uh, I am a centric uh, trend setter. Uh, what's up with the lack of uh, what? What do you use Grecian formula in there? Where's all the gray hairs on the top? Or what? Yeah, it's, it's pretty impressive. Just for me. I dye the gray in. I've told you this. Oh, that's right. You I have, have to opposite. dye it in so I look older. That's right. <laughs> well, I can say from you holding those tools up up by your glasses and everything else, there is no way those are even close to any. Other they're tool shaved. The First of all, they're spring steel. Okay. Right. Yeah. So these are twist tools and, and, uh, I haven't seen any tool made out of spring steel from, uh, Stan and, um, yeah, this is a totally different tool. There's no way, you know, <laughs> other than the shape being, yes, I get like it. Like a sickle. Yeah. Right. A smaller version of what he already had. Yeah. Right. Yep. And, and then we always we already showed a we already showed a patent from 1942 <laughs> sure, of the same so. design. I think so, that one was bigger than the one you're holding, though. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, I'm gonna. Now, say have right you got now, a chance to push with the them. same tool? Uh, yes. Yes. Yesterday, I was working on a hood, and I used the curved one, and it worked beautiful. Um. It was fantastic. Just got up there. You have tons of leverage because the heel end, and this is, is the heel rounded or is it uh, sharp yeah. at the edge there? It's, no, it's it's that's what I was going to ask. It's rounded. You okay. didn't get any, John? No. Oh. Well, they could be coming, but you know, we'll see. They they're kicking the horse, but I think they might have killed one on the way. But right, yeah, <laughs> they might have. So yeah, uh, uh, those are the those thing are is when you have a big heel like this, you you get more leverage because you have more surface area hitting uh, the brace or whatever you're leveraging off of. So it's more positive and it's more control, in my opinion. No, it's so, beautiful. Good yep. job, by Dean Rick. and uh, Mr. Rich Hummert. Yeah, yeah, that's a that's an awesome collaboration right there. Yeah, yeah. So. 
love it. And um, guys, go out and buy some of these right now. Right. Well, I'm done talking about uh, the the knockoff. I, I'm not even entertaining that anymore. That's yeah. clearly, you know, something completely different. Well, I finally got a chance to see them relative to something. When we're looking at photos, you have no size comparison. But when those when those are up by Daniel's glasses, you know, his glasses are no bigger than mine. So it's like. Okay, yeah. that's yeah, that's getting into hoods and and decks and and those those are two completely different things. Yeah, it's a small tool. Cool. So, nice. Yep. Awesome. But um, yeah, that's the few tools that I've gotten this week. Uh, I got some prototypes from uh, VIP also, but he didn't want me to talk about those yet. Right. Um. He's always coming out with good stuff and playing playing with all kinds of different materials and things like that. <laughs> yeah, you know, last time when Peter was in here, uh, maybe uh, I don't know, maybe four, three, four weeks ago, he was he stopped in at Anson, and I laughed. I'm like, dude, remember when you worked at you? You're like, hey, Vince, can I stay? Can I sell my VIP knockdown at your booth with my wife? And I'm like, yeah, sure, no problem. So. It, you know, it was the first year Magnatech Mount was selling something at MTE, <laughs> and him and his wife, he started, they just sat there the whole weekend, two days straight, and sold that VIP 2. Point, or 1.0. 1. 1. 1.0, yeah. Right? Just sold the crap out of that thing. He's like, oh, this is for my wife and, and for my kids, my two daughters, to have something to do. I'm like, okay. Here he is freaking three, four years later now, just killing it with all these beautiful knockdowns. And they're like industry standard. If you don't have a, yeah. a 3. It's all I use. And a 3.1. Uh, that's all I'm using. Yeah. Yeah. My favorite one is the one that, that takes the cherry cap. Yeah. I, I find that works really, really well. It's just a, a everyday knockdown. Yeah. That, yeah. that tip. Yeah. For beating because on the it, crown. Well, it's got rounded edges on it, which I really like. Um, it's polished too. You could yeah. use it without a cherry cap, I believe. But it works. It works really well. It it'll knock down a sharp, uh, you know, little Audi. But it also works good on soft paint. So it kind of bridges that gap, which I like. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So. Phenomenal tools out of VIP. Yep. Never had a bad one. Yeah, no. and you know things. You know, Peter is just one of the nicest guys in our industry, and I, I could super see, nice. You know why he's a very giving man, and and uh, I could see why he does well with everything he does uh, come in contact with. And his he's wife excellent. is is awesome. Yeah, excellent. Her in guy. Las Vegas. Yeah, excellent, excellent. He's like John, like one of those one percenters that you know do very well. So, anyways, yep, yep. what else have we got going on? We're uh, we're running out of time here. So, well, I'm gonna give you guys a little hint. We've got a super super special show coming up in a couple weeks. I'm not gonna tell you what we're gonna be doing, right? Yeah. But I'm gonna tell you it's gonna be a jaw dropper uh, show. Breaking world first. Yeah, Only it's gonna be on PDR Tool Time. It's gonna be super special. So. Guys, be ready to tune in in a couple weeks. Who we are going to have on is Natalio Valderrama from the owner and creator of Dent Wizard, <laughs> starting in 1983. Yeah. And he's never done. You know what I'm going to do, right? A show, right? You're yeah. going to edit that out. I'm going to beep the shit out of that. <laughs> <laughs> beep, 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 beep. <laughs> but no, this is going to be awesome. This is going to be a first for any podcast um, to have this special guest. It's really an honor. Man, I was <clears throat> I was kind of racking my brain as to uh, I don't I don't know if I have any original questions. I'm just going to have like all of the same that that everybody else probably hits him with so i'm really looking forward to it this is going to be a busy show we're probably going to have five or six people on so i'm probably going to kind of mute myself and just listen and enjoy the show i'm hoping it's going to be a two or three parter it will be yeah. for sure yeah yeah because yeah. it's going to go on yeah because yeah, there's yeah. other special guests that we're 
most likely going to have on at the same time, I'm thinking. So it is going to be, uh, you know, this is one that I'm probably going to take notes ahead of time to make sure that I cover some of the bases that yeah. uh, yeah. needs to be no. talked about. So no, nope. That's what I was thinking about today. Let's, let's not <laughs> talk any further about it. Yeah. All right. Hudson brought us up something, and uh, let's hit you guys with it just a little bit, an idea. We're thinking about um, throwing up some old tools. Man, are you guys interested in seeing some, like, what, you know, we, we brought up this whole thing about the uh, uh, the patent with this tool designed for, for shaping body metal yep. <laughs> from 1940s. Now, I have what looks like a dent rod, but this thing is older than I am. It's from the 1950s. And I've had it in my toolbox forever and a day. I'm, so. I'm always on the hunt for vintage uh, tools. Um, I have it on my eBay. I have it on my Facebook marketplace. I'm constantly looking for old body shop tools. Um, when I went over to um, Ian Cordell's place, he had a ancient uh, fender tool <laughs> that he told me that they used to have a gas stations. And when you pulled up to the gas station and you got gas, this guy would come out and take dents out of your fenders with this tool. What? Uh. Come on. Yeah. Yeah. I'm serious. And, um, it was super cool. I got pictures of it. Um, but yeah, I think that's a great idea. You can share all kinds of good stuff like that. There's some unique history. I can think back to, um man years ago and i don't even know what happened to him now full set of pneumatic hammers that were arched and these things would go back into a panel two or three feet and then they had what was a little air hammer head on the end of it and you changed all of the tips and you would be clean up as i can't even it was so cumbersome to play with uh yeah, talking was, about the dominator no, this thing makes the Dominator look lightweight and a child's toy. Oh, okay. These things were monstrous. These are from way, way back. And, 40s, and honestly, a lot of these tools were used on open fenders. You know, back yes. in the day when they had, you know, open fender type of uh, dents, um, you know, those panels were thick. And, they were uh, thick and deep. Yeah. And you had and to have some reach. We get like 1940s trucks all the time come in and... Um, they've got Audi dents from rocks being shot up from the tire and yeah. hit the fenders and they put Audis, but it's much, such yeah. thick metal. It's really, they're soft Audis, you know? Yeah. yeah. And I, I had them uh, down. Now here's the difference though. And, and John could attest to this as well, because he was a body man working on that stuff. Just because it's thicker doesn't mean it's stronger. I, right. no. That's what I found out. Besides trucks, old friggin' Ford and Chevy trucks. <laughs> I don't know what they how, how they did to that metal, but like an old fifties model car or sixties, it it's it's probably not galvanized steel. I'm thinking, and it probably was yeah. not annealed. Nope. And you got to use some blunt tips because if you use a sharp tip, it is it is poke city, man. Pickling Pete goes to town. Yeah. Yeah. So. Um, and some, you know, I've learned on motorcycle tanks, I've found the older the tank is, the softer the metal is. So I don't know what, you know, what the, the makeup of that metal was, but it was soft and easy to push, almost like pushing lead. Hmm. Interesting. Now I did an 82 Yamaha, just kicked my butt. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yep, eighties. But it was good. it was bad. It didn't have any paint on it to begin with, so it was a good it was a good test run to see how you could shove a tool in. But yeah, we're gonna um, see if we have some some stuff. If you guys have a vintage tool, send us a photo of it and yeah. a, a bit of a description because the thing with old body shop tools is, man, most of them got just thrown in cars into junkyards. Nobody thought they would be important or anything of significance. Whenever and, I go to a, a swap meet or something like that, I always look at old tools, even <laughs> yeah. wrenches and stuff, because that stuff has value to it. Even before yep. Snap On, I am always different. I'm always on the hunt for hammers because some of the old body shop hammers and the weird shapes they have, um, I oh, pick yeah. them up. My dad, uh, my dad was a body man. That's where I got into the trade. He had a pick hammer that had an 18 inch long pick, 
Um, my little brother lost it somewhere uh, at some point, but I, w- I really needed that when I was doing an older restoration one time, because that would have been the hammer that reached. Now yep. I've got some really kick-ass rods from Ultra that would do the job. But yeah. 30 years ago, you know, I needed that super pick hammer. So those, those panels were big, but send yeah. us those photos and a story about the tool. Tell us a little bit of it and uh, we'll see if we can get them on the air now that we're doing video. Yep. So, yeah, I've got, I've got a couple that uh, you guys would enjoy. Um, I've, I've posted a, about a few of them probably, um, but, um, and also dollies. I, collect dollies all the time not now not your no, not barbie your girly dolly <laughs> barbie dollies you have an eye for that stuff daniel i mean you're look at your shop your shop is an antique yep you know and that that takes a certain eye not everyone has that eye. i try to have that eye but i don't yeah i i don't know what it is about me but i i just love it anything i can collect it's your um, feminine side could be could be <laughs> I picked up a well, I picked up an talk. antique I picked up an antique vice that a body shop was gonna throw away. And this thing was what? huge. I mean a huge those things go for vice. a fortune out here. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. I mean this thing's worth five hundred bucks easy all day long. And I took it and I cleaned it up, I repainted it, took it apart, re-greased it. <clears throat> it was perfect. In fact, it works better than perfect. Yeah. I love it. Well, why would you do that? Now you knocked all that patina off and stuff. Or it wasn't functional. It wasn't functional. I it was load the term patina. <laughs> it it didn't have good patina. You know, it, it yeah. had it had overspray patina. <laughs> all right. <laughs> yeah. All right. All right. Nice. Well, I, I look forward to seeing uh what you guys can throw at us and what the uh, four of us can kind of come up with. So I told that story. Did I tell the story online about my wife hitting the, the Tesla? Was that online? No, that was, was on, that, uh, that was on private. Oh, okay. Because I finally got to, uh, the notice uh, of how much it costs to repaint a <laughs> rear Tesla bumper. That's not bad for a Pearl. No. Pearl by, that, that was paid by uh, uh, Sa- Safeco Insurance. Safeco. So, no. uh, they had Liberty Mutual. Liberty Diberty. Uh, yeah. So yeah, Liberty was there. So Liberty paid them, and we had to pay Liberty. <laughs> so if you're uh, if <laughs> if you ever get into a road rage situation, or if you want to hear the story in person, uh, ask me next time you see me, and I will tell you the story <laughs> of my wife ramming a Tesla Model <laughs> S. <laughs> now you have to admit there is a sense of irony. In a woman that moves from California to Texas and then runs into a freaking Tesla. <laughs> yeah, and we don't live in the city. <laughs> See, I, Tesla drivers aren't aren't bad. Uh, it's the Prius drivers, dude. The no, Prius drivers guy, are the worst. Oh man, this 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 yeah, really? not this guy. I always thought Honda drivers were were overly the worst. Be, as be a, uh, come to California and you'll you'll find out what a Prius driver really is all about. <laughs> Prius drivers and BMWs. BMW. There, there's a Facebook douches. Pr- there's a Facebook group <laughs> called We Hate Prius Drivers. <laughs> there's a Facebook group on that. So that, that tells you everything. Jason Thrasher. Yeah, we still love you. Yeah, well, he, people hate the way he drives because he, he <laughs> drives by by his meter, trying to maximize his his, uh, uh. his MPGs and stuff. <laughs> oh, yeah. See, that's, that's what it is that gets people all all road raged. Yeah. So. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Well, then we got and some great stuff fast coming. Lane. Out. Yeah, okay. great yep. stuff happening. Absolutely. Uh, kudos to you know the our our. our Fearless leader Daniel over here in the upper left hand corner. Well, actually that corner right there. Well, he's yeah, he's he's over there for me. <laughs> but yeah, for setting up probably what is going to be the most unique interview uh, this channel's ever done. So yep. awesome work, Daniel. Yeah. Thank you. So, okay, so listen, I think we're done. Yeah. Yep. I believe we are. And guys, okay. do me a favor. Don't forget to level up your tools. Don't do stupid stuff. And keep it stiff. Peace out. Microphone's shaking. Really? I really sold it. Yeah. <laughs>
Make sure to hit that subscribe button so you can stay up to date with all the industry and tool related news every week. Visit AnsonPDR.com for the largest selection for just about all your PDR tools, where you'll find hog glue and hog tabs. 